welcome back. This is the, uh, I guess it's a quick little demo video of the uh, real-time motion control system, version 2. It, um, I have it currently running a model of a uh, mass damped spring. So it's, a, it's just a, like a simple mass damper. And um, I have a force sensor that I made. It has got, so there's a little sensor on here. Let me zoom in here. There's a little sensor on here, and that is reading this magnet, and then it is on a little spring. And if I do this, I can move the servo. So normally a servo is not back drivable, right? You push on the end here, nothing happens, right? I've always wanted a nice force feedback system, and this allows you to do that. So you can move it around, and then I've got the end stops programmed in so that it hits the end here and then so I've, it's a damped spring so it's got a little overshoot critically damped system and that's running all in the little micro and it can do uh, four of these simultaneously because if you watched the previous video I um, explained how you can set up if you put this at this jumper you get 3.3 uh, volts so you can power sensors and that's what this little sensor here is running at 3.3 volts to a ratio metric linear Hall effect sensor. So I built this uh, a while ago and finally just got around to actually writing the code and having the uh, proper hardware to be able to read it and actually respond to it. But that's pretty cool, huh? But I know th this is a lot of work to go through here and design. So if you, like, it's kind of cool because if you push here, nothing happens. If you push here, it works. <laughs> I can't. You can't really tell. I don't know what I got around. That's kind of flimsy to show because um, you don't really get a sense of how easy it is to push on a you know through the video um, so here you go I'll just use a zip tie right so normally yeah look see very simple just a zip tie whereas this side you know completely immovable unmovable object right and do it, put it aside. Nice and easy, right? So that's cool, but yeah, there's a lot of parts involved. This is the very, very, very first one that I built, and it's got a lot of parts in there. And um, so, the next version, um, you know, they just got this little spring and all this other kind of stuff to try to make it work. So, we'll just unplug this. And you can leave that running. So this is version 2, and the first thing you'll notice is, let me get this hooked back up here, you can see my turbo switch, these are old uh, PC, uh, uh, back when I used to build PCs you could uh, you know, hook up the front panels and stuff and that's what all those are from, but anyways, <clears throat> so we're on the same exact thing, and so the back is still, you can't push it on the back side, but you can push it on this side. And what I did is, if you look, if I bring this around, well, you know what? Um, I cut the, uh, the servo arm here, like a little zigzag pattern. You know, I'm not going to focus. Well, if I can get it to focus. Well, anyways, I've cut a little zigzag pattern in the uh, in the servo arm there, and that allows the servo arm itself to be the spring, right? And for the magnet, <clears throat> you can actually see the other side has a magnet on it. It is right here. It's this little tiny itty bitty here. Let me. So if you looked on that other, the other one, I had a pretty big. A you know, quarter inch long by eighth inch round magnet on it. This one, so that means that like full scale deflection is you know that entire length, right? So it's got it's got to move a whole bunch to make that actually actuate. Whereas this one barely, I mean you don't even see it move, right? It is completely that, not even anything. But here's the magnet. So this is the same magnet, 
it is I get it to focus it is that big it is a super tiny neodymium magnet it is uh, 30 second 1 32nd across by 1 16th inch around and so what that means is full scale deflection is plus or minus 1 64th of an inch and the reason I went with something that tiny is a it kind of just kind of you can press fit it into the hole which is really cool that's what's on this side. That's what the sensor is reading. But it lets you do something really extraordinarily. Here, actually, I can show you how I have it bent because if I can do this. And of course, it's going to get a little unhappy because I just took it off, right? So here's the sensor. It's a SOT 23 package, ratio, minute, ratio metric linear Hall effect center, sensor that I just soldered on to a couple wires because. Um, I, I want to make a little circuit board that actually has that on there, but I haven't done that yet. But if you look, so I'll just set that down. You can see now, now it won't, you know, the servo's not going to move. But let me get it to focus. There you go. You can see how I cut the, uh, the arm there so that it could flex, right? So it doesn't take very much at all for that sensor to pick it up. But, so I thought, well, if it doesn't take that much, what if I don't cut it at all? So this side is completely uncut, right? And I just have the magnet embedded in there. So this is really, really, really tricky to do. But we're going to try and actually align the sensor. So it's got to be in the center, right? So if I get off a little tiny bit, you can see it flips, right? So I gotta get it just perfect. And that's just because I don't have the software written to where we can calibrate it. But if we get it right smack in the middle, so that's pretty close. I'm gonna press my luck and try to get any closer. But now this side's the side that's cut, right? Oh, you know what? I gotta tighten it just a little bit because the wires are now applying just enough pressure. Okay, so we've got it pretty centered. So this side, if I go to see, this is the side that had the cut in it, and now it's locked in there. So this side, no cut, right? It's definitely stiffer. Let me see if I can get it closer to the center. There you go. So it's definitely stiffer, but it still works. Oops, see there I actually overdrove it. I need to tighten this more because the it's too loose. Because the actual the drag from the wires is actually causing it to move around. So if I center it somewhat reasonable, right like that. So now, even though there's no cut in there, I can still move the servo. So now you have full full strength, right? Now it is heavier because essentially it's a really stiff spring. But that means you don't have to modify the servo arms, right? You still have to put this little sensor on there. But this gave me another idea. Like, if you hold it, right, you can actually move the, the body around. See? And this gave me another idea. So, here's the next iteration. So we'll unplug this guy. And that brought up this iteration. So let me get this guy plugged in here and show you this. It's kind of cool.
Okay, so now we're running this. So, you'll notice we just have the arm. There's no magnet in the arm, but look. I can actually still move it. Right? And what's happening is the sensor is right here. And the magnet is, if it'll focus, come on, I just crammed it in here. Come on, focus. There you go. The magnet is crammed right there. You can see just me touching it. It's that sensitive, right? And what it's doing is, I use the, um, you know how these servos, if you ever bought uh, the retail package of the servos, it comes with all the little mounting, like little bits of rubber that go into the servo there for the to mount them. And then, you know, they give you little grommets and the screws to, to mount it. And that's what I did. I mounted it to this piece of aluminum. So this bracket, if you look, you can see through it. See? It's not touching the servo except at the at these four corners and that allows the body of the servo is, is now the sensor and so the as you apply torque the whole servo rotates about this axis and that causes just enough I mean it's 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 imperceivable but full scale is plus or minus 64th of an inch so it doesn't take very much. We're talking like it's moving like microns, right? And it's able to actually pick that up and move it and return to center so I can sit here and play with it. Now it does take a, a considerable more force. Uh, the ones that have the, um, the sensor at the very end like that, these ones are super easy. I mean, you just barely touch it and it moves. And so this is the exact same code, the exact same parameters, the exact same gain. Nothing has changed. And the only thing is the spring constant of the entire system is completely based on on how that is coupled and so yeah if you mount your servo with the uh, little rubber pieces that come with it you can make force controlled servos that There you go. Isn't that cool? I don't know. I, I thought it was cool. Oh, this is one of the original ones that I built a long time ago. Um, this is a... I couldn't use it because it's 5 volts, and this is running 3.3. And so that's why I had to get these little tiny ones, which are 3.3 um, volt version. But yeah, that... Uh, so you don't even have to modify anything now. Just mounting the servo, and that is it. That actually acts as your force sensor. So, granted, it is pretty tough, but um, I'll play with it, see if I can't come up with something better. Um, but yeah, you don't have to, you could, it could be a wheel, it could be whatever you want, it doesn't have to be an arm. But the cool thing is, you don't have to modify the arm. Just mounting the servo gives it enough feedback to actually operate as a spring. You got a little hysteresis, not too bad though. That can always be taken care of in software. Or I could put a stiffer centering spring on it. But, uh, yeah. That's it. Force space servo. So that's the, uh... If you didn't see the overview of, of this, it is, um... It was the previous video. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching.